Yes, hello and welcome to the lighting lesson of 3D Studio Max. It's a very basic lesson about lights, uh, default lights in the program. So I've, I've created the scene for my students who want to do the, the classwork. So the scene is just basically a room. Uh, it has windows on two sides. It has some flying buttresses and some materials are assigned to these objects. So here I will be making, this is a kind of a traditional lesson that I'm doing, I'm making a teapot, uh, let's say gallery here. So I have a stand and I have a teapot on top of it and I'm assigning different materials. For example, this first teapot is a metallic teapot. You know how to do with the uh, with, uh, material editor. You open here, you go under architectural, you create an architectural material. You go to default and you change it to metal. So, and that's how we create like a metal and then you can make ceramic or you can have like a, even a stone teapot just to show the light. So the first type of light that we are going to show here is a directional light. You go under create tab, you have your uh, geometries, you have your shapes and the third one is the lighting. So target spot, the very basic first kind of light that we are going to explore, you drag and you drop it down. Uh, okay, let's say this is it. I have to go uh, to the top and make sure that this is uh, on the right place. So first when you're picking the light, you can pick the source and you can pick the target because this is a targeted light. If I pick the source, you can see the target stays the same, but I want to pick the entire light. So I have to go to the side and just pick this middle line. Uh, now we can go to the top and just drag and put it on top of the existing one uh, because this is where I want it to be basically. Uh, let's say, I mean, you might, you, might have, you might change it somehow. If you want to see the light in the scene and see how it looks approximately, you have to change your shading uh, in the viewport. So but, uh, to do that, you have to click on this second one, the standard, and you have to go to high quality. If I go to high quality, you can see now there is a kind of beam of light here. Uh, but we have to be careful with that because now... Uh, the thing is, uh, it doesn't have any shadow. It doesn't have like that kind of qualities that we are looking for. And then when you rotate, you have to wait for it to update. Okay, for the light, you go under modify, just like for anything else. Uh, you pick the light. And here you can even change the type. So if you, if you want it to be directional, you change it to directional, and it, is, it will be a direct beam of light coming, like the one that you see in, you know, amphitheater, the spotlights that are, are being held up on the actor. So, no, I want it to be spot. And omni is just a general omni light. I mean, you can guess by the meaning what kind of light is that. So shadows, uh, have a close look here. If I turn the shadows on, it will it will start to cast shadows. Let this to go away. Okay, on. And now you see the shadows are appearing. Uh, always you want to have the shadows on. It's very like uh, unlikely that you have a light without shadow unless you're looking for something special or like kind of, some kind of special effect that you, you, you don't want shadows or purpose. So let's go, you can create, you can increase the intensity. If you're, uh, if you're lighting, you can even have negative light. So it can, they can, it can, it can act as a black hole as well as a kind of a light. You can suck light out, let's say, or have negative light, which is a little bit counterintuitive, but uh, be, be careful about this because this is somehow uh, if you have if you're on the logarithmic scale or if you are in automatic uh, lighting, uh, it will be affected by other lights in the scene. So if you have too much like daylight, this will not be visible. The light that we have now. just like your regular everyday light at night you see a light and say so, okay how bright is this and at day you turn your uh, switch on and it's like nothing. Okay, so be, be aware, like sometimes you think that the light is not there. Actually, it's there, but it's not visible with, other, with all other lights on the scene. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, play with some of these. Uh, like you can have decay, where the light starts to like somehow disappears. Uh, you can have near attention or the far, where, where, is it, where does it start? Where does it start to slow down or to become more faded? Uh, you can have the cone, which is what we are playing with. So you can have the cone's light bigger. So this is the, the overall cone. And then uh, the second one is the overall cone, actually. Uh, so you can have this... Uh, oh, I did make it too big. Didn't I? Okay. 
No, no, no I'm, I'm changing the far. I don't know why. Okay, so the second one is the size of the main cone. Okay, so you can play with it until you find the thing that you like. And the second one is the hotspot. How fade do you want the edge of the shadow to be? So if you put it very close to the center, it will be a very central hotspot. And then it will slowly fade away. If you want to have more kind of a sharp edge, you bring it a little bit closer to the edge. So these two I want you to play with, the spotlight parameter. This is important. If you click on show the cone, it will create some sort of like, you know, the foggy uh, environment when uh, like uh, uh, you can see the beam of light somehow. You can have it rectangle as well if you want to, uh, sometimes maybe. I don't know, for now I'm just keeping it on circle, make sure that the shadows are on. So the far and near, you can go and play with this. Uh, it will. I forgot actually, I've never, I, I don't use this often. Uh, because I don't use the, the, the basic, uh, let's say, lighting in the scene. But you can see, like, look at this blue one here on the top. We can start, like, uh, we can start changing. So the light basically starts from this point on now. So you have this this blue one and the brown one, the far end and the close end. So you can have it, where do you want it to start? Where do you want it to start to fade away? Uh, I mean, uh, it's up to you if you have, if you're looking for a particular kind of, like, uh, Scenario which is this, this is applicable. Go ahead and use that. I've already used it now, but it doesn't like uh, it really not that important to this uh, Practice, okay, so let me pick up the teapot pick up the stand And let me go ahead to the side and pick up the light. I'm keeping the control down everything selected Let me uh, copy this in this elevation Let's say Not eight, six more times. I think this is enough for our museum of, let's say, teapots. So let me go and render this. Let's see how it looks. Uh, if, if the high quality is on and you don't have a powerful computer, it will, it will slow down like just, uh, just like mine. So let's press F9 and see how it looks in render. Okay, now you can see the beam, the beams of light, and you can see the default 3D Max lighting somehow making everything else also lit in the scene. I mean, this is the thing. Now, uh, if you want to make it more interesting for me, go ahead and change some of these. Uh, press M on the keyboard. Uh, let's say, okay, we have one here. Let's say I want to have another one which is, I don't know, glass, uh, translucent. So let's say the second one is glass translucent. This one, this one, assign material. Let me create another one and go for something else. This is glass translucent. This is, let's have it, uh, I don't know, plastic, a different color. Let's assign this one to that one. So you just go ahead and make it a little bit more interesting. So let us let me go ahead and assign to some of the materials that I already have in the scene. Let's say this one, and let's say this one is maybe this red one and this one is the famous blue teapot okay now why did I make two red ones this is supposed to be the one with the uh, translucent glass okay now again let me focus here on some of these and press F9. All right, so we have our different types of teapots now and everything else. So these lights, we use the spotlight now. There is one light that you're already familiar with and I've used it previously just to create a general render and that's the skylight. Skylight is creates a kind of skylight dome. 
uh, you want to turn it on and you want to have the cast shadow at the end uh, I'm decreasing the samples now so if I render it will get uh, it will show a better result so this when you turn it on let me show you here it will create some pleasant shadows around corners it's just like the skylight like imagine a cloudy day uh, something like that uh, let me press F9 okay see it starts to take more and more and more time to render uh, whenever you have a new light in the scene so you want to be very resourceful with your lights because it's often uh, it's not a good idea to have so many different lights this skylight is a very good light if you are working on an idea or you want to present something really quickly to your teacher just add a skylight it make it makes it look amazing uh, just skylight and have it cast shadows you don't really have to do anything else you, just, you can have that one and create like some very beautiful results just like we already did for the like the village type uh, uh, poly modeling that we were doing in the previous lessons but now you can see it looks really actually uh, it looks pretty good uh, the way it is so the next thing I want to do you, you can do you can do it two different times you, you, in the systems you remember the systems you can have a daylight system which is basically a combination of a sunlight and a sky skylight just like the one that we created here uh, the other types you can go ahead and just free direct tar target they're all same variation of the, this target this targeted spotlight so, so it's if it's like for example if you have a lamp in the middle of the room you have a spot you have uh you have a spotlight not a targeted spotlight a free spotlight it means that there is a point in space which omits light and the light goes toward all directions. So like that's the difference. So you go ahead and like try to try to do that. And you see the render looks uh, looks pretty good. All right, so I press F8, I press 8 on the keyboard. First, first let me give it a kind of uh, something else. Uh, uh, okay, general, bitmap. I've already made a folder here for you. Uh, so let me find that folder. See if I put any skies here. I think I did. Okay, let's say this is this is pretty good. I mean, let's change the color also. Some something uh, more. And now I want to create one of those lights. So you go to system. First, let me do with sunlight. So, uh, daylight, daylight also pretty good. Uh, it, it, it gives you a warning, but you say, okay, yes, I know, I know that, because it removes the, the, the light from the scene, the 3D Max light, let's say. So when you create this uh, daylight system, when you create this daylight system, you have many different options here. You can go ahead and, uh, because this is now uh, on date, time, and location. So you can click, click setup if you're looking for a particular day of the day in the year, or even you can have it by the hour, you can have the daylight saving on here. The amount of control you have over this is right, like pretty amazing. And you can go get a location as well. So you can like have your own location anywhere in the world that you want. Like for example, you can search here North America, let's say Asia. Let's say now I'm in Cyprus. So uh, let's find Europe. And let's create like here one in the Cyprus that I am. Okay, now it's here. Let's say, I don't know which month of the year, uh, the hour, uh, so uh, it somehow it gives you a, a lot of options to create uh, to create here. Just you can have amazing control over this. You can even uh, import data weather files, which are like talking about how like cloudy the days, how much overcast do you have. Uh, I mean, there are many different things that you can change here. Uh, usually, because I'm uh, land rendering this these days in Lumion, we do this over there. Uh, anyway. So you can do it, but now I'm putting on, I'm putting it on manual because I want to have it kind of particular look from this direction. Uh, but if uh, you are designing in a site uh, and your north is uh, set, use this because it is to your advantage. All right, so I can go here and like check it now. Now you see, you can see this is what this, this is the look I'm looking for. This is this is what I want to see in your project. I want to see a combination of the two different kind of shadows. Like you see now, the daylight is coming in. And just be, uh, just know that this is glass. So the glass, when you make something transparent, automatically it will not cast shadow. Uh, and that's something you want to keep in mind. Let's press F. Now let me first uh, let me let me first make it a little bit uh, smaller because I don't want to waste your time here. 
So I'm taking kind of a test uh, render here to see if it looks okay. Uh, the better your computer, the less less time you have to spend for this like test and see. Now it's somehow uh, for a very small render I have to wait a uh, significant amount of time. Now you can imagine when you have a kind of bigger file with so many uh, details in it, how, how long will it take to render something like that. Okay, I mean it's looking okay. We even have the reflection of the sky into the glass and everything. Uh, looks pretty good. We have our spotlights. And we have our shadows. Alright, so this is for the sky system. And remember, we already have, uh, we already have a, a skylight also in the scene. So another thing when doing this kind of renders you have to be careful about is your exposure control. When you press F8, make sure your background is something light because that would create a kind of a secondary ambient light that you want to have in the scene. Make sure that it's on automatic or logarithmic expo exposure, one of these two. So if I may change it to automatic, it will be a little bit brighter than this. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's... Uh, uh, it, will maybe, it might be too bright even if I put it on logarithmic. But anyway, so explore these different settings. Either use the logarithmic or automatic. Uh, never, never leave it on no uh, exposure control because that would be really something difficult to, to manage. If you absolutely know what you're doing, go for it. But uh, otherwise, uh, try to keep it simple. Anyway, so as I was mentioning before, this rendering, rendering is, it goes hand-to-hand -hand with both material, with lighting, and with the environment set, environmental control setting, let's say. Uh, because like, if, you change, if you change the render engine now, if we go to our nodes, we have to change most of these lightings and even some of the materials because the transparency. We have to, we have to use the, the engine's uh, material. But it's easy if you already set the material or you have material IDs. You can easily change it. That's why I'm uh, advising my students to work with material like this as much as they can. So you see, it, it has a different look. It's a little bit more, you know, expo uh, the exposure is more, you know, uh, naturally distributed in the scene. Uh, you might prefer the look of logarithmic uh, exposure. And you can see the spotlights are all, all also here. So you have both the spotlights and you have the shadows and everything. I mean, it looks okay. Both uh, logarithmic work. Logarithmic has a kind of a more natural look to it uh, than this one. But this is better, uh, like the exposure is better on this one. So this is one of the lights that you can... Uh, daylight, uh, daylight is a good lighting system because you can have your own... Uh, you can have more control over it. But uh, other than that, uh, go for daylight as far as I'm concerned. Uh, here... You can also, in the daylight system, you can go ahead and have your own, uh, like, another different types of shadows if you want, or uh, you have more control. You can even decrease the intensity of those lights uh, and how you want it to, uh, like, be reflected on the, on the scene. Okay. Now, uh, something else you can do. Uh, you can have... Let, let me get rid of this, just show you the sunlight. Sunlight is the same. Uh, okay. It's one omni gigantic all directional light. Uh, it's also locked. Uh, you cannot move it. Uh, you have to move this. Uh, you have to move actually this to, to, to move it like uh, in, in a direction because it's not like kind of manual control just like the one that we have over uh, for the uh, sunlight, but now uh, let's go ahead and render this. See, let's see the difference. Uh, uh, I prefer the daylight system over the sunlight. Uh, sunlight is just one gigantic directional light, uh, and you see it renders a bit maybe faster. Uh, that's that's might be one of the reasons that you want to go for this. But anyway. Uh, because it doesn't have the additional, you know, uh, skylight. It doesn't have the additional dome of light uh, uh, for everything. All right. So
Yes. Okay, this also works. You can see. Uh, what else? Uh, let's go for an HDRI, HDRI, which is a kind of a, let me let me actually get rid of this uh, light. Let's see how it looks if we go for an HDRI uh, lighting. You press eight on the environmental control. Uh, you have this uh, let's say uh, background, if I remember correctly. Uh, let's see, this is an automatic. Uh, you can click here. I forgot where it was HDMI or was it just sort of like bitmap? Uh, I have one picture here HDRI, and then you create a daylight system. Let's go ahead and create a daylight system. Let's change it to manual just for the sake of practice and just put it somewhere that casts some beautiful shadows for us. Okay. This looks nice. Now let's go to the lighting settings and see what else we can change here. Uh, uh, you see the intensity, we can make it more or less intense. Uh, what, what what I wanted to change? Uh, I can have a map here. Ah, skylight parameter. So you can use the scene environment, or you can use the sky color, which now we already change it to something. Uh, or you can click on no map, go ahead, and add this HDMI. H, H not the HDMI. <laughs> HDRI to the image, you can go online on Google and search for HDRI images. So it will create a kind of, because when you're rendering like let's say in an urban field, it's different lighting when compared to when you're rendering in a kind of a farm. You know, when you're, com when you're rendering in a jungle, uh, the trees are returning more green lights, green photons let's say. And when you're in urban, so you have more grayish, more brownish, like let's say from coming from the bricks or the asphalt or those kind of things. And the ambient light, because there are more surfaces to reflect light, are, 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 more, are more stronger than when you're rendering in an open field. All right, so this is actually the logic behind. You want to catch the light of the environment itself. So let me let me go ahead and like render this, see, see how it looks with the, with the HDRI uh, image assigned to this. It might, it might uh, take a bit uh, longer to render, but it will change the colors a bit. I don't know if it's uh, it will show here. Like if this one has a kind of a bluish hue to it, you will see a kind of a more bluish hue uh, in a way that uh, let me let me remove that other light. Yeah, it's here. It's somehow messing up everything now. Okay, let's render again. F9. Okay, I'll wait here a bit to see if it renders something. I don't know why it doesn't show. Let me go to 8. Let me remove this. Okay. Let's run it again. I mean, maybe it's a little bit difficult to um, to see the difference here. But if uh, if you if you're rendering something in a uh, kind of unlike, let's say, urban setting, you'll see the difference. Like it really makes a difference. HDRI. 
uh, if you have pictures of the environment in a kind of a lighting set that you like or you want to especially when you want to have a post production you already have a picture of the site and you want to fit in the picture with the site so you want to have the, the white balance uh, like let's say working with the with the setting so you use this and you adapt it to the to the to the skylight of your uh, like let's say daylight system and in, uh, like when you do it like that it will it will create a kind of a similar undertone in your render and will be a kind of a much much uh, let's say better uh, it, will, it will yield much much better result than this uh, it's very it, it makes a, it makes a huge difference so I mean yes uh, this is it for uh, the lighting for today uh, be resourceful with your light and try to uh, try to create uh, like a kind of an exhibition here I want to see one render something like this uh, let me let me adjust it okay if you want to see exactly what you're rendering you go here show save frame uh, I want to see a long frame if you can this time because this is a kind of uh, let me go ahead and change this back to the picture that we have because it looks it looks really cool with the picture so you can go search online find some good uh, you know uh, some good images let me go ahead and for the lighting as well use the scene environment And use environment setting. Okay. Now at ten, let's have something like eight hundred by four hundred, or let's say three fifty even. A kind of a cinematic shot, shot you know, with a kind of long. Uh, I want to kind of kind of a lower dramatic perspective, you know, from the from the ground, and then let's, let me keep this to control and Alt and just zoom around and press F9. Let's see how it looks. I mean, maybe it was better when we had the, the skylight in the scene. But anyway, I mean, just uh, I mean the way I'm not. This is not my primary way of lighting the scene. This is just a practice so that you you work with some of the lights. And later on, when we go to the render engines, we can like use proper uh, photometric lights and uh, we will render something. Uh, it will take more time, but it will be okay. All right. Okay, that's cool. That's what I want to see. Some spotlights, uh, put some different teapots with different material, create a kind of a setting that the light comes from within the windows and create shadows on the ground. Use a daylight system, use a skylight, uh, make the shadows on for the skylight. So we have these soft shadows around the corner. 
if you want to create a kind of a more dramatic, uh, you know, uh, darker scene, go and change this to the, the logarithmic exposure. If you do that, it will create a kind of a, a, a darker interior when compared to the exterior. It might even look better than the automatic, but if then you, then you have to increase the amount of lightings inside. So you might go and like create more lightings for the for the interiors, you know, because it will uh, uh, it, it will matter. Let's say even this is a better let's say window to render. Okay, let's see how it looks now. Uh, these lights may be a little bit too dull for this logarithmic exposure. We have to increase it a bit uh, more. Uh, or let's see what else we can do. Uh, okay, now pause, cancel. Now you can like go ahead and play with the other lights. For example, let's say what happens if we create an omni light in the middle. It's it's up to you. Like let's say okay now it's on logarithmic. I create an omni light. I want it to cast shadows. Uh, let's say, and now let's say if if it makes a difference. Uh, so play with the lights. This is the basic uh, uh, tutorial that you have to do for yourself this week. And send me one uh, 3D Max file. The Omni light you see is just kind of a omnidirectional light uh, with one center in the spot in the center that shines, and the shadows are being almost automatically casted from there. So what you can see, like how uh, how you can create different kind of effects with different kinds of light. Uh, like for example, let's say if we have a if we have a you know, if you have actually a designed lighting elements in the scene, because this is basically, uh, this is a kind of a, let's say, exhibition. So what you can do, uh, you can create a kind of, let's, let's say, geosphere here. Uh, let me go ahead and decrease these numbers. Okay, right-click, convert, editable poly, Let's create. Every, let's select everything. Uh, create inset by polygon. Okay. Now delete. Let's say we have this also artistic object somehow uh, in the middle or being hung from the roof. And we have our omnidirectional light in the middle of this object. So now let's see how it looks. Actually, it's, it is showing you a kind of a cool preview here. And you can see, like, let's say, I'm looking for some lighting effect this week. So let's see uh, what you can bring to the table. I mean, uh, knock yourself out. Uh, feel like some different effects. Let's see how it looks now. I mean, the shadows are a bit soft on that uh, on that object. Uh, it should render something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't want to show. Let's give this a shell. Okay. Let's pick this.
Let's use global setting. See if it shows now. I mean, it does. Anyway, so it's uh, maybe it was because of the shell, or I just checked the use global setting because the shadows were was were on the shadows uh, were on, but uh, it was not using the global setting. Uh, I mean, usually because uh, I never it's part of the curriculum, the scanline renderer that I'm teaching, but uh, it's. Uh, it's, it's good for when you have like monochrome renders or you want to like uh, do something really quickly but uh, the thing is that uh, I'm often using V-Ray which you have to use V-Ray lights uh, or photometric lights uh, or I'm using Lumion or Twin Motion, and those already have their own kind of built-in lighting system so uh, usually the scanline renderer or Arnold, Arnold is also a very good uh, render engine, uh, is used by many companies, big companies, the Arnold render engine. I will show you Arnold render engine in the coming weeks. I mean, that's, that's more useful to learn how to do than scanline because scanline is a very heavy render engine, like more or less, I'm not very happy with how quickly it can handle. Like if you read, if you, if you learn like some of these new GPU based renderers, like the one that Blender is uh, using, the Redshift or those kind of things. Those are much, much more quicker and you, it will save you a lot of time to create something uh, when you're creating something like that. Because not all of us have access to supercomputer to like create a kind of a reasonable render in a very small scene like this, you know. Uh, anyway, so let's say I want a scene like this, okay. I'll put this also uh, in the classwork. I want something like this. You make something like this and you submit it uh, before next week. Thank you very much and I will see you next week. Please do this, uh, the mater both material ID and lighting because I want to start uh, I want to start some animation so we can move to the render engines after that quickly.